Hi guys, ya sabes que Carlos Sirzate and I wish you a happy and healthy new year. This is the first episode of the new year and I'm bringing to you a full menu that you can make in 60 minutes for your family or for guests for a dinner party. This is going to be a delicious menu. I know we've done lots of chicken uh, main courses, but today I'm going to teach you how to make beef shish kebabs. They're known as um, ground beef kebabs. There are a lot of times they're, they're made with lamb. They're loaded with Mediterranean flavors, super simple to make, juicy and delicious. We're going to serve these with a lemony Mediterranean rice pilaf. I'm also going to make some quick pickled onions to serve with these because it goes well so together goes goes well so good together we're going to serve these with tzatziki even though they're commonly served with greek yogurt in greece but i like to add some cucumbers to it and more flavor basically because tzatziki everyone loves and then we're also going to make well, i'm also going to show you how to serve these in a sandwich because once the um once the kebabs are done grilling on a, on a plain old cast iron skillet. You don't need any fancy equipment for this. We're gonna, we're gonna grill some vegetables in there too, some bell peppers and tomatoes, and the whole thing is gonna be delicious. It's all gonna be ready in 60 minutes, and let's get started. So we're gonna start by grating the garlic cloves. Now I'm using two garlic cloves, but you can use up to four or five garlic cloves in here. I'm, I'm gonna put them in my food processor and let them pulse a few times until they're very finely chopped. And then I'm going to cut this onion into uh, basically a few pieces, equal chunks, so that way that it purees and processes easily in the food processor. So I'm going to add the, the onion to the food processor and pulse it a few times until it's finely chopped. I'm going to leave the garlic in there. I don't want the onion to become mushy because if it does, it's going to release a lot of liquid and it's going to make, it's just not good when you put too much liquid in the kebabs. They're not going to form easily. You just want the onion to be finely chopped. Take it out of the food processor when it looks like this and then put it in a big bowl where you have your ground beef. Now I'm using ground beef, but you could do a combination of beef and lamb, or just lamb or just beef. But if you're using beef, use a cut that has 20% fat in it because you do need some fat so that way these kebabs are nice and juicy. Think burgers when you're making this. The best cut of meat that you would use for a burger, that's what you, you, that's what you should use for your kebabs. It'll make the juiciest, most tender kebab that you've ever had. So add the onions and the garlic to your ground meat. And now it's time to finally chop some parsley. You want to get a big bunch of parsley and use mostly the leaves. You can throw some of the stems that are on the top in there, no problem. Finally chop them. I'm just going to do it in my food processor since I've, I already have it out. I'm going to put them in here and pulse them until they're very finely chopped. This is what they should look like. And now I'm going to add the parsley to the big bowl as well. Then I'm going to add a heaping teaspoon of salt, another heaping teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of paprika. This is sweet paprika, not the smoked paprika. Some ground black pepper. I'm just going to add about a half a teaspoon or so. You can add as much or as little as you like. A teaspoon of dried oregano and some crushed red pepper flakes. I like to add, a, I like to go a little bit heavier on the crushed red pepper flakes, but add as much or as little as you want. And that's it. The best way to mix these is with your hands. Go ahead and knead everything together until all of the ingredients are well incorporated and combined and then once everything is combined and kneaded well cover it with some plastic wrap and leave it aside for a little bit so that way all the flavors can marry you can definitely mix the meat a day ahead of time and leave it in your refrigerator it is going to taste delicious if you get to do that if not there's so much flavor in these that you can really grill them straight away but if you are putting it in your refrigerator overnight make sure that you let it come to room temperature before you grill them you can definitely form the kebabs while they're cold and then leave them out so they would that way the meat can come to room temperature because you never want to grill cold meat or even cook cold meat in an oven because it's it seizes up and it becomes hard instead of tender we're going to let this sit aside for a few minutes and we're going to move on to making our rice pilaf so that way the whole meal comes together at the same time so i'm going to make my mediterranean rice pilaf off using my rice cooker. I love the rice cooker because it frees up stove, stove top space, keeps the rice warm. You really just press a button and the whole thing is ready. It comes together in no time and it's a very inexpensive kitchen gadget to have. I'll put the link where you can get it down below as well as on the blog post because I highly recommend it. I don't like kitchen gadgets but I do love my rice cooker. So I'm going to make my Mediterranean rice pilaf in it. It's going to be lemony and delicious and we're going to start by using the flash setting. So the flash, the flash setting raises the temperature a little bit higher, so I like to start, start off with that. And to that, I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of, of butter. They could be salt, the butter could be salted or unsalted. And then I'm gonna add a cup of chopped up vermicelli noodles. You can use filet 
or you can use orzo pasta if you want. We're just gonna cook this until the pasta is nice and golden and toasted. It's going to intensify the flavor. While that's happening, get the lemon juice ready. You're gonna need the juice of a lemon, so juice the lemon and keep it ready. And I like to use chicken stock to make this, so three cups of chicken stock or chicken broth. You can use vegetable broth, and if you don't have either of them, you can use water. Just have that all ready. I have two cups of basmati rice that I've soaked. I always rinse the basmati rice before I use it, and basically I just put the rice in a big bowl, and then I rinse out the water four or five times until the water is clear. That way I know my rice is nice and clean, and it also cooks up to be lighter that way because you wash away some of the starch. Once the, once the vermicelli noodles are nice and toasted, this is what they should look like. You might have to press the flash rice setting a few times. It just depends how fast your rice cooker cooks. Then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add the rice in. Drain out that water first. Add the rice in with two teaspoons of salt. You can put a little bit of olive oil in there too if you want, just to have it cook a little bit nice and separately. Add the chicken stock along with the lemon juice. Give everything a nice mix. And then all you have to do is turn the machine off Turn it back on and put it on the white rice setting and you leave it alone until it beeps to let you know that the rice is ready. And once it's ready, all you have to do is go in and fluff it up and leave it alone. You can make the rice in the morning. If you're making this for dinner and you, have, and you know you're going to have a busy day, you can do this in the morning and just leave it in your rice cooker. If you do that, it keeps it warm all day long and tends to dry it out, dry it out a little bit. So before you serve it, just put in a quarter cup of broth or water just to add some moisture to it. And I would do that about 20 minutes before I serve it and it'll be good to go moist and delicious. The rice is done. Now we're gonna move on to making our pickled onions, which are super easy and they're so flavorful and delicious. There's a long way to do it and this is a quick way to do it. So I start off with a red onion and I finally slice it into half moons and put it in a big bowl. Then I'm gonna put lots and lots of red wine vinegar on top with a little bit of salt. I like to put a hefty pinch of salt actually and just mix everything all up so that way the onions are coated. Then I like to put a nice handful of parsley in it too. So just finely chop some parsley, put it in there, Toss it all together and leave it aside. This is gonna help the onions soften and they're gonna be so flavorful and delicious. You can keep this in the fridge for days and just add it to sandwiches or serve it with rice or with your kebabs, of course. So now it's time to form the kebabs. So I have uh, a cast iron skillet that's heating over medium high heat. It is a good idea to, to cook these in a grill pan if you have one. I don't have one that fits over this burner over here. This burner is a little bit uh, smaller and, if, and my um, grill pan is rectangular and long. So I'm just gonna cook it in a cast iron skillet. It works perfectly. If you wanna cook these on a grill, I would light up the grill until it's nice and hot, brush it with some olive oil and then grill these all together on the grill. It's gonna be much quicker, but I find that they're so much juicier cooking them in a cast iron skillet. I'm gonna separate the meat in into 12 portions, and then I'm gonna roll each portion into a long like suzukaki, if you've seen me make suzukaki. Basically, you can make it into a patty first so that way you compress it all, and then roll it out into a long cylinder. Don't make it too long because when you're cooking it, it might break when you go ahead and flip it over. So just this length is good. Make 12 of them. If you wanna make them smaller, you can go ahead and roll them smaller and make as many as you like. Once they're all shaped, what you wanna do is put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil into your pan. This is gonna help the so this is gonna help the kebabs cook nicely without sticking to the pan. Spread the oil so that way it's all over. And then put about four kebabs in at a time so that way they cook evenly. You can probably squeeze in one more if you really wanted to. Cook them about three or four minutes on each side or until they're golden all around. Once they're cooked, transfer them onto a plate. And now it's time to add our veggies in here. So for the veggies, I'm using tomatoes and bell peppers. You can use, you can add more things to it if you want to, like some onions, but I feel like this combination is the best. I just have these small tomatoes here, but Roma tomatoes are great too. Cut them in half or in quarters, and then you can cut the bell peppers into big chunks as well. Put a little, there should be lots of flavor in your pan right now from the drippings of the kebab and the oil that was already in there and it's going to add so much flavor to these vegetables you don't need any more oil if it's looking kind of dry go ahead and put a couple tablespoons of oil in there make sure that heat is cranked up to medium high put your veggies in there and you don't want to move them around too much let them cook about three minutes on each side until they get a little bit charred and they're just 
they should be a little bit soft once you're done. You don't want them falling apart and mushy. Once they're cooked, transfer them onto the same platter as you have your kebabs and the meal is ready to be served. With that, we're just gonna make some tzatziki really quick. Tzatziki takes just minutes to make. Go ahead and shred some cucumbers. I like to use English cucumbers because they don't have big seeds and sprinkle them with some salt and set them aside so that way their juices can kind of come out so the tzatziki is not watery. Put some yogurt and sour cream in a bowl. Add the, add the, add the shredded cucumbers. Make sure you kind of squeeze all that water out so that way your tzatziki is nice and thick and creamy. Grate a garlic clove in there and then season it with some salt and pepper. Mix the whole thing up together and give it a taste so that way you know that the seasoning is right. And that's it, you have tzatziki ready in minutes. You can skip this step and just serve it with some Greek yogurt if you want, that's how it's done in Greece. Then you wanna warm up some naan bread if you're gonna be serving it as a sandwich. In the oven you could put it or even on the grill pan, that's fine. And you can either make a sandwich or serve this with a lemony rice pilaf. There you have it, the meal is ready in under 60 minutes and this is a restaurant quality restaurant worthy meal you guys so it's going to be delicious let's put a sandwich together and give it and do the taste test So you wanna make sure you get some pickles in the bite. If you, if you can fit some grilled veggies in here, they're gonna be absolutely delicious. Kind of tastes like a gyro, but juicier. So delicious. The pickled onions really bring out the flavor of the juicy, juicy kebab. There is so much flavor in that kebab and it is really super juicy. The whole thing is delicious. I don't know if I want it with, as a sandwich or with a lemony rice pilaf, but I'll probably have both. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. You can print out all of these recipes on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. The exact measurements and all the recommendations are gonna be on there. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.